to a little bit of a late start, but you guys know that when we start this, typically uh, we like to give an opportunity for folks to jump in and see us, right? So I don't, I don't want to ever, uh, you know, some people like might have technical issues or whatever the case is. So I don't want to be in a position where I'm making them feel like they couldn't get in on time or whatever the case is, right? So today I want to take the opportunity to work with you guys a little bit and talk about the biggest conversations that are happening in the market today and some of the stuff that you can do as a business owner to sustain and be able to kind of push forward and be able to represent yourself accordingly and grow your business in a time where everybody's freaking out, right? And everybody's thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do? You know, business is going to crash. You know, I'm going to go to TGI Fridays and get a job. Like everybody's figuring out different things. Very few people though, when this happens, really double down and push forward. So my goal today is to come to you guys and say, hey, I want you to double down on this market. I want you to succeed more than you ever did in this market, right? So sometimes I get on the phone and I do a coaching call and somebody says, well, you know, last year I did 50 units, but this year I've slowed down tremendously and I only have 15 in the books. And so, but, and I say, why do you think that is? And they go, well, I mean, Dave, you know, you're the coach, you know what's happening in the market, right? And so that for me, like I get crazy frustrated with that answer because that's not the answer. Because I guarantee you that if you go into the MLS and you do some research, you're going to realize that there are still people out there pumping out deals, right? Why do you think they're pumping out deals? They're staying massively consistent with their business, right? All right, guys. So we always start off before we get crazy, crazy hot. Welcome to the Freedom Training. This is our Freedom Achievers webinar. We were doing the SOP webinar. The SOP webinar is over. If you guys want access to the SOP webinar, all of those courses and all of those recorded sessions are in our Freedom Achievers platform. The link to the Freedom Achievers platform is in the chat. Just click on that link, join it, download the app because the app is going to send you guys push notifications every time we post something in there. And then I challenge you to participate at a very high level because I promise you, if you show up, you will find things that will help you benefit your business, right? All you got to do is show up. That's step number one, right? So we always start off our freedom training with it's a freedom day. So everybody, if you can get inside your chat group right now and go ahead and type it's a freedom day. I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to do that. It's a freedom day. Type it in. Get the endorphins going. Make your fingers type that out. It's a freedom day. Put it inside there. Believe it. And believe for a fact that you know that you're sitting in this training today to find something that's going to give you additional tools in your business to develop your freedom, whatever that means to you. And that's how this whole coaching company was born, by the way, right? The idea that by building business and creating the right investments and believing in ourselves would help us find the freedom we deserve, whatever that means to you. It could mean a farm in Minnesota. It could mean a beach house in Puerto Rico, right? I mean, I've got folks that have moved to Puerto Rico. I've got folks that have moved to Tulum, okay? I got friends in Tulum now, which is great. So I got places to vacation, right? Those folks have done the things necessary to develop whatever it is that their freedom is. What do you think for those people it is? It's location freedom, time freedom, financial freedom, right? So whatever it is to you, I want to help you build it. That's why we do this every single week, okay? So much love to you guys. We're going to jump right into this. So look, guys, right now, like we said a little while ago, everybody's freaking out about the market. Everybody's talking about how the market is shifting, how it's changing. Um, and, and I love, by the way, the word shift is not always a negative thing, right? Like if I'm here and I shift my body to the center so you see me better, that, that's not a negative thing, is it? We did something great. We put ourselves in position to be seen, right? But people will often associate, oh my God, the market is shifting with a negative change. Something wrong is happening in the market. And I guess it's all perspective, right? Because if you said, hey, the market's shifting in a great way, then it'd be a very different thing. 
What do you guys think is happening? You can type it in the chat group right now. Do you believe that our market is shifting in a negative fashion or do you believe we're shifting into normalization? Which one do you believe? Normalization or negativity? Normalization or crash? Good, I'm loving it. I see it, I see it. So as you can see, most of you already know, right? It's going back to normal. We are facing normalization in our industry. Now, what does that mean? Well, anytime we have a shift where inventory decreases and buyers decrease, that often says that the amount of business that we do will also change. And here's the crazy part. Once upon a time, and I can only speak on, on the Miami Association of Realtors, once upon a time, the Miami Association of Realtors was the largest real, uh, association in, in the nation. And it had like uh, 22,000 agents. And we used to be like, oh my God, there's 22,000 real estate agents signed up with the Miami Association. And today that number is closer to 65,000. Now, what do you think is gonna happen during normalization? Do you believe that we are going to lose real estate agents in this industry, yes or no? Type it in the chat group. All right, many, always, always. All right, Penny says always, Claudia says many. Who else, who believes, yes or no? Right, Christine says yes, Rosie says absolutely. Katia says yes, iPhone says always. I don't know who iPhone is, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> so, guys, listen, this is just a reality. And by the way, it's OK. It's OK. You guys are here educating yourselves. And I'm sure that you watch not just me. You're out there and you're learning and you're educating yourselves and you pushing yourselves to do better in this industry. So that being said, you guys will be the last of the Mohicans, right? You guys know what I mean here, right? You guys are going to be the ones who surpass, the ones who achieve. You know what it means also for us that they will, um, the, the fact that all these folks, right, will leave the industry, what does that mean for you in competition in the market? Less people to compete with, right? And although many of them may not actually be competition to you, although many of those agents don't even hold the candle to the business that you could create, they are somebody's mother, brother, sister, father, uncle, cousin, right? And so what happens when you go to that listing appointment, they go, oh, well, my cousin's a realtor too, right? And so, you know, I'm sure this happens around the nation, but in South Florida, we always joke that every listing appointment, you're in competition with a family member. Because somebody in that family has a real estate license, right? And so we are uh, we are working in a very crazy and and exciting time right now. I love this shit, okay? I love this market. I love the excitement that goes behind it. It allows us the opportunity to really create something special for ourselves because to step up in a market where everything sells in five seconds and say, look at me, I'm a top producer, but I'm not impressed. If you came into the market and you came in during a very, a very good time where everything sold and everyone had business, you're not impressing me. You want to impress me? Let's go now to the normalization and, and let's create the same business, right? So how do we create some of the same business? Let's, let's talk into this real quick. First, let's get with listings, right? We are saying that there will be less listings in the market. We are saying that listings may be on the market longer than five minutes now, right? As a matter of fact, normalization would say that listings will be on the market for about six months. A six month inventory is a normal market, right? So now for those of you that used to write, here's like a little shift. Those of you that used to write listing agreements and say, I could sell this house in six months, you probably still can, but I think it would be safer if you write a listing agreement for 12 months, which is what used to be the norm. So if you've been in this industry long enough, you know that listing agreements went on the market 
and or listings went on the market and you had an agreement for 12 months and you had a cancellation fee, you have to protect yourself and you have to protect your listings. So yes, there was a cancellation fee. If you were marketing a house with me and I was going to put it on the market, I had a 12 month contract and I had X amount for a cancellation fee. I calculated my cancellation fee by my hourly rate and how much money I'm, I knew I would spend in marketing very early on. So photos, video, and all that other stuff. So my cancellation fee was very commensurate to the property size, the location, et cetera, and how much more work it would take to sell that property. If it was a small townhouse, I'd be somewhere about $1,000 per cancellation. If it was a waterfront 6,000 square foot property, my cancellation fee could be somewhere around five, $6,000. And when people would question that, I would say, I am committing to you that I am going to spend money in advance to market this property for sale. I need your commitment that I won't do that and you would easily cancel on me. If we're doing work together, if we're going to go into business together, this is an agreement we need to make with each other. Now, moving into normalization, having to move properties, the best of the best to the best marketing. So let's talk about that for a minute, right? Because now we're facing a situation where the average hold on a house will be seven to 10 years. There is even speculation now that millennials who purchased homes over the last three years will hold homes longer than 12 years. So what does that do for us? That spreads out the gap. We used to say that properties will move every six to seven years that somebody will own a home on average for six or seven years. Well, people now are realizing that they would like to create stability even stronger and reinvest money into other things like entrepreneurism that has become very popular over the last few years, right? Like traveling, right? I'm sure you guys have seen the videos of the new millionaire, right? The new millionaire isn't riding around in a Rolls Royce with a $10,000 watch or $30,000 watch and a Gucci belt and, you know, red bottom shoes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The new millionaire lives humbly in their home that they have had for the last 10 years. And they take all that extra money and they experience the world. That is the idea of the new millionaire to, in today's world. But for you and I, that means that there will be less listings available to us. So there's going to be a big step in relationship building. Building relationships will become more important. Not that it wasn't important before, but relationships will become more important than ever before. Relationships will be something that you have to invest the time into. If you were in this market and you were just running into deals and running into people and saying, I'm the best and look how much I sold and this and that, and they would just give you their home and you would go sell it. And then you would forget about those people because you had 10 more going on and you couldn't find where to put the two hours a day in your calendar to do follow up and sphere of influence and follow and, and checking in on your previous clients. You couldn't figure out where to put it because you were just going crazy. I got pictures, I got an inspection, I got a closing. I, it's going to slow down for some of y'all, right? And even with all of that, you should have always found the time to take two hours a day and reinvest it into your clients, reinvest it into your business by grabbing the phone, throwing an AirPod in, shutting down the screens of your computer and having conversations with folks, going through your CRM, which you guys should be using at an extremely high level. And people need to be in stages, lead, speaking to, looking at homes, under contract, closed. All of those give you an opportunity to know who's who and what's what. So if I filter my search by closed, I should have X amount of people that have closed on a deal, whether they be rentals or sales. And I should have the opportunity to build a relationship with them by calling them at least once every three to four weeks. Hey, how are you? How's everything? How's the house? How's it going? Right? How's Jimmy? How's John? How are the kids? How's school? Did you graduate yet? Like, dude, there's so many things you should know about your clients over the process that you would type into your CRM so you never forget. So you have a conversation with them. Call them on their birthdays. 
set that up in your CRM. Dude, do you know what difference that makes? I have an auto dealer guy. Now, I've bought probably, I don't know, 20 cars in my lifetime. I have one guy that reaches out to me every time for my birthday. One guy. One auto dealer. Who do you think I think about when I'm thinking about potentially buying a car that might suit or connect with that guy? I'm thinking about him because he happens to be the only person that calls me on my birthday or sends me a text. The only one. By the way, you can do this automated. You can set up a smart campaign in your CRM that will automatically send a text message on your behalf saying happy birthday to that person. Now, I believe birthdays are a little bit more personal. So pick up the phone. What would it hurt you every day to make one or two birthday calls? Does it hurt you at all? Does it change? It does it affect your business? Huge, because you're that person, right? Now I could filter leads, and I could spend two hours a day following up with people who are on the fence, who are three months away, who are still fixing their credit, right? Hey, how are you doing with your credit repair? How's everything going? Were you able to pay down that Bank of America card? Oh, that's great news. You're down to four grand. You were at six a couple months ago. Great effort. I think about 30 more days, we should reach back out to the lender and see where you're at. Did you register with FICO.com? Do you have automated uh, reports coming to you on a monthly basis so you can track everything that's going on? Great. Let's get back together with our favorite lender and have a conversation with them. Then the next day, I could filter it by under contract. And I can go to everyone that's currently under contract with me and have a conversation with them. Hey, this is what's happening in your file. Just want to keep you updated. How's everything going? How are you feeling? I bet you're excited. Does that make sense to you guys? Type yes or no in the chat box. Yes or no. Does it make sense to you guys? Awesome. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Penny. Awesome stuff. Now, let's talk about buyers. Buyers will decrease as well, okay? The reason that buyers will decrease is because interest rates have risen. Inflation is in effect, all this other stuff, right? And I want you guys to think about this. People are claiming inflation, but we're not quite there yet. There's a very thin line between keeping the world, keeping the country healthy and inflation. And I'm telling you, it's a very thin line. And so we hope and we pray that the government doesn't cross the line one way or another. We have no control of that. What we do have control of is where and how we spend our money. That's what we have control of. So if you start to see the world lean a little more towards inflation, you need to take a step back and say, I need to stop spending here, here, and here, whatever that is. It could be a system in your business that doesn't have a very strong positive return on investment. It could be a thing that you do for your business that doesn't have a very positive return on time. Remember, we talk about ROT all the time. Money you could get back, time you cannot. Right? Then when you piece all this together, you look at your personal life. Should I eat out as much as I do? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Why does the government toy with the line of inflation? Because they need to slow down purchasing. They need to slow down purchasing so the chips can come in for cars, so phones can be made, so cars can hit the lot. Because what happens when there's a lack of trucks? Like right now, I took my F-150, I took it for an oil change, I left, I immediately got a call from the used car department. Hey, I don't know if you're interested in selling your truck, but we have a serious, serious, serious uh, issue with inventory on F-150s, and we'd love to evaluate your truck and see if we can maybe make you some money on the truck and you can buy something different. I said, the problem with that is if I give you my truck, what do I get? Because you've got nothing in the lot. And you're going to charge me $10,000 inventory fee on top of the MSRP on the car. And that is where we toy with the line. Because we could keep making this money by selling a bunch of homes 
and going to pay way too much for a car because they charge this ten, fifteen thousand dollars over SMR MSRP because of that lack of inventory. They want to charge you a marketing fee or an inventory fee. Or we can slow down the world, slow down purchasing, put some more trucks on the line, fill the lot up, and then they start offering you what again? Negotiation power, zero percent interest rates all that other stuff we love so much, right? And so this is where we toy with that line. What does that mean for you? Interest rates went up to slow buyers down from purchasing homes so that homes could stop selling $40,000, $50,000 over appraised value. We're in the same situation, just a very different inventory, right? And for some reason, every buyer that previous to this hype that was scratching just to get their discounted purchase and come up with closing costs, somehow came up with an extra $40,000, $50,000 over appraised value. Whole new world, right? Now we're moving back to normalization and homes will actually sell for what they're worth. Even now though, we see pro properties, you know, there's a battle, it depends on the neighborhood, depends on the type of property, depends on a lot of stuff. But as we push into this and we become more normalized, there's less buyers because the interest rates are higher. Debt to income ratios play a role. A lot of people over the last two years have picked up a lot of new toys and have a lot of bills and they paid way over for them. And they have all this stuff. Therefore, their debt to income ratio is screwed up. Where they qualified at 2.7%, they may not qualify at 5.5%, 6%. And if they do, they qualify for significantly less, which means there will now be a gap between the price of homes and what buyers can afford. But as long as there are still buyers in the market that can't afford those price points, price points will not decrease. And what we're finding in the market today is that we're finding that although buyer A doesn't qualify for that $400,000 house anymore, Buyer B and C still do. It may, it may not be the house that they wanted because they qualified for 600 before and it was a much nicer house, but they still want to buy a house. Because why? Because as real estate agents, we sell the one commodity that everyone wants or needs. Does that make sense to y'all? We have charities that we donate money to that build homes for people. This is what we do. We sell those things, right? So we have the one commodity that most everyone needs or wants. And we get to create that transition and we get to help people make the largest purchase and the largest decision that they will typically make in their lives. So that being said, get away from the news and the nonsense and the information that's out there and come up with the true facts and numbers. We talked about this last week, knowing your numbers. We talked about it actually for like the last two weeks. Knowing your numbers, knowing your neighborhood trends, knowing if prices are going up or down, following the interest rates, having weekly calls with your lender and going, hey, where are we at on the interest rate? How are things going, right? Having that conversation, studying your MLS, creating hot sheets for yourself that automatically get sent to you on a daily basis to tell you what's happening in the neighborhoods that you sell, will help you have better conversations. Because you now, even though if I tell you ignore the noise and you do, you have two things that you can, you, you're gonna be able to do. Number one is you're gonna be able to get on social media and you'll be able to get in front of your phone and you'll be able to go, this is what's really happening in the market today. I ran the numbers today and I've been running the numbers for the last six weeks and this is what we're seeing in the market today. This is the truth, right? This is the truth to the neighborhoods that you're actually looking in, not at a national level where they're trying to tie Miami, New York, California in with Tennessee, Minnesota, and Ohio. We're not the same markets. So speak on your market. The second thing is it'll allow you the opportunity to have stronger conversations with buyers out there because when the buyer says, you know, I think I'm going to wait. My first question is why? Well, because I think prices are going to come down. I've been watching my Instagram reels 
And a lot of people are talking about prices coming down, right? I've been watching Fox and CNBC and NBC and everything else, and prices are coming down. But they're not, and you can prove it. You need to be able to run those numbers well and prove them well. By the way, price decreases are not the same as sold prices coming down. Pricing decreases can also be homes that hit the market at too much and came back to reality, right? We're going to face a little bit of time on that until everyone starts to face reality on the, on the sale of these homes. All right. Uh, again, relationships will build referrals. So the more people you talk to and the more people you create relationships with, the more referrals that you'll get from more business, right? Then uh, marketing. So let's talk a little bit about marketing because one of the things that I noticed that really slowed down in the past couple of years was folks wanting to work with an abundant amount of renters, right? Also, the conversation to be able to have with the renter on creating or converting them to becoming a buyer. That conversation slowed down significantly because people who are renting typically could not afford to come out of pocket $40,000 over appraised value. And they still had to come up two, three, four hundred dollars over the asking price on a rental. Well, that stuff's going to slow down. So now the conversation with the potential renter is, hey, maybe you qualify to purchase. Because guys, we're a year away or less maybe from a buyer going to a seller and saying, I love your home. I've noticed you've been on the market for six, seven months now. I would like to offer you a full price for the house subject to appraisal, right? And also, I would like a $10,000 credit towards uh, the purchase price. We haven't been able to do that because we've been in a, in a seller's market. So we really haven't been able to push that agenda. But as more buyers step into the market, they could have less money and we can now go to sellers and say, hey, you have equity in your home. We understand that. You've been on the market for a while, right? And now we get to go and say, I've got this great buyer for you, right? He's purchasing FHA or VA or whatever. And he's got almost enough money to purchase his home, but he needs a credit for 10 grand. And inspection periods are going to be 15 days instead of three days. And all of these things will shift. Just pay attention to it because we still will be competitive with other agents handling business this way. New loan programs will come out. It's just a given. It's going to happen. This is the cycle of real estate. So new programs will come out where people with not enough money will be able to purchase because they'll get it from here or the new program will require less or whatever the case is. Right? Now, uh, running ads is a wonderful way on creating lead flow, but also maintaining your brand. As you move to a normalized market or as you move to any shift that decreases the amount of inventory and decrease or still have historically low inventory and decreases the amount of buyers, allows us the opportunity to brand ourselves in a very, very specific and strong way. So whatever your brand is, right? Whatever your company name is, whatever your team name is, whatever your individual name is, brand the hell out of yourself for the next couple of years. Make it so that everyone knows your face and everyone knows your name. Make it so that when you walk into an event anywhere in the country or anywhere in your space and that you're marketing to, when you walk into an event, people know you. And they know you because you do not get out of their social media reels and you do not get off their bus stops and you do not get all of their newspapers and they can't stop getting your, your postcards anymore because you're doing this at a very high level. This is one of the most important pieces. And I think next week we're really going to get deep into brand and brand equity. Okay. Because there is something, there is such thing as brand equity and we're going to get very heavy into that. Okay, now, one of the biggest things or one of the biggest notes that I made here was um, 
it is about time if you like postcards or if you're into postcards or you're into social media ads or whatever your thing is, it's about time that you start marketing into rental communities. Hear me out. We just had a conversation on how to convert renters into buyers, right? So what's wrong with marketing into rental communities and saying, I understand you're a tenant when you prefer to be the landlord. I understand you're paying somebody else's mortgage. Wouldn't you rather pay your own? Contact me and let's come up with a plan to get you in your own home. That's a great way to create a pipeline. A great way to create a pipeline. Because some of those folks, believe it or not, will be ready now. Some of them will say, you know, I'm going to just pick any name cat. I've, I've got a 550 credit score cat. I don't know what to do. All right, cool. Let's get you with a lender. Have them have a conversation with you. Look at your credit report and see with simulators how we can raise it. And then let's come up with a six to 12 month plan. Great. Let's do that. And while that person's on a six to 12 month plan, they're so excited about the opportunity to purchase that they won't stop talking about it to their friends, to their family, everyone. And their friends and family are going to go, really? You're working on purchasing? Yeah, I have a plan. Like I worked this out with my realtor and my lender. We got this plan. And I got this credit repair person and I've got this uh, debt payment plan going on and whatever it is, right? And they go, well, introduce me to your, your realtor. I want to I know. And now you get more people and more referrals in your pipeline simply by coming through as a consultant rather than a ticket taker, a McDonald's employee, right? Where people walk in, they go, can I get a number two? And it's a no-brainer. No, now, you, now, now you're at the gourmet restaurant. How would you like your steak? How would you like it seasoned? What sides would you like? Would you like those cooked to the crisp? Would you like, right? Now we get to be the consultant and help. Have you ever been to a nice restaurant and said, what do you suggest? And they actually have an opinion. They're consulting you on what you should eat for dinner, right? Think about that for a moment. Now, as you're running your marketing, start to figure out what percentage of your income is going to go towards marketing. We talked about this a little bit last week. My belief is 20 to 40% of your income should go back to branding, marketing, and developing your business. 100% agree. Okay? Run ads. Look at Google. Look at social media. Look at print. Because print will be strong for you moving forward. Okay? And then no matter what ad you do, no matter what type of marketing you do, no matter what you put together, everything should look, feel, and smell the same. Because you have to brand it accordingly. Adidas does not make shoes without their three stripes on it, right? Nike does not make shoes without the swoosh. Apple does not make Apple products without the Apple on it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Be the Apple of your neighborhood. Use the same colors. Use the same logos. Use the same print. Use the same format over and over and over again. Make the postcard look like the social media ad. Make the social media ad look like the Google ad. Make the Google ad look like the Instagram ad. Make the Instagram ad look like the, the LinkedIn post. Make it all similar so that you have consistency in brand equity. And then every single piece of marketing that you do should point everyone in the same direction. It should go to your website. They should go to your website so that they can register. They need to register in order to end up in your CRM. And your CRM becomes your lifeline for the next few years or for the rest of your business career. In your CRM, look at how to create smart campaigns or uh, drip campaigns or action plans or whatever it is that your CRM calls it. <clears throat> and have them create texts and emails that go out like, Hey, it's David Kurz. Are you still looking to buy or sell a home? Or, hey, I think we have some deals that fall within your price range. Are you still looking for a home? Or, hey, I've got some people looking for a home exactly like yours. Have you thought about selling? 
Those are all automated text messages that you can have going up. Okay. Now, these all should be in your CRM, pushing, pushing, pushing. Now I'm going to, I'm going to have you guys write down a couple things. And I want you to remember this and write this down, put it on a postcard, uh, tape it up to your computer, put it on the wall in front of you, tape it to your desk. I don't know where you put it. Take a screenshot of it, make it the background of your phone. I don't know what you do, but I want you to write down the next three things. Michael, write these things down in the chat so that everyone can see them, okay? First one is speed to lead. Speed to lead is critical. When you create all this marketing for yourself and people actually follow through and they go through the funnel and they show up in your CRM as a new lead, then you don't respond to them in a specific amount of time, they will move on. So speed to lead is one. I guess Michael's not there. Stand by. Hold on, guys. No, I'm here, sir. I'm writing it down. All right. Speed to lead. Next one is speed to meet. Now, there used to be a time where people would get on the phone and they would say, hey, thanks for your interest in my listing at 123 Main Street. Uh, so let me ask you these 7 million questions before I go out of my way to meet you. We're not there anymore, and we haven't been there, and we shouldn't be there, be there anymore. Speed to meet. If you are able to do the speed to lead and get to that person on the phone, the entire mission of that phone call is to meet that person, to get in front of them, and to begin creating the relationship necessary to either A, help them buy or sell, or B, become their best real estate contact ever and receive 15 referrals from them over the next two years, even though they didn't buy or sell. Or a combination of the two. They buy or sell with you and tell everyone about you because you are just the absolute best. And the last one, the, the last two pieces, uh, slow to listen, speed to lead, speed to meet, slow to listen. And what does that mean? That means once you get in front of them, right, you went fast, you called them quick, you met them fast, don't just oust what they have to say. Slow to listen, listen to everything they say. Take notes, it's okay. People feel like they can't take notes in front of people that they should remember everything. No, tell them, hey, excuse me, let me pull out my pen and pad. I wanna write down the things that you're saying because I wanna make sure that I service you appropriately. Your opinion, doesn't matter yet. Let them divulge their dreams, their wants, their gifts, the things that they just desire to have, the pool, the tiki, the yard, the no yard, the low maintenance, the high maintenance, the two story, the one story, the 4,000 square feet or the 2,000 square feet, the three bedrooms or the five bedrooms, the two car garage or the no garage. Listen to them, listen to what they have to say. And then last but not least, focus on relationship. Focus on relationship. When you focus on the relationship, you are more than just a realtor. You are more than just someone trying to help them by yourself. You are someone who gets to know them, their spouses, their children, their parents, their lifestyle, their homes, their likes, their wants, their needs. You begin to be that person. And if you can build on the relationship and truly care about the wants and needs of this person, there is no stopping your business in any market, by the way. If you build this out for the next two or three years and you do this consistently and you become very good at it, you will live your business on referral base. And when you live your business on referral base and you still create relationships with every single person, I'm not telling you got to be best friends with your last 50 clients. I'm telling you, you should know who they are. And you should stay in communication with them. And if you could do this, let's say two, three years from now, the market shifts again, it completely crashes and all hell breaks loose right? 2007, 2008, all over again. Guess what? You're still the go-to person. 
guess what? They call you and they say, hey, Danielle, I'm, I'm losing my home. I don't know what to do next. Or Rosie, I think I need to downsize because I'm not going to be able to afford this because I'm losing my job. Is there still equity in my home or is it too late? Do I have to short sale? Will this become an REO, right? Or Carol, I think I'm good. I've got money saved. I can afford everything. My business is still thriving in this crazy crash. And by the way, over the last couple of years, I saved like $300,000. So let's work together and find these homes that are decreasing significantly in value and help me buy 20 of them. Because all those people exist during a market crash. It's not just the woes. It's the people who take advantage of the woes as well. Right? All right, guys, that is it for today. Does anyone have any questions or anything or comments that they'd like to jump in and give me? You can tap them, you can chat them, or you can uh, speak them, whatever David, you feel. Hey, you, it's Claudia, how are you doing? Uh, Sudi, what, what um, CRM do you recommend? So that's a great question. Um, I'm a big fan of Chime. I love Chime. I think Chime is a great CRM. I just started using Follow Up Boss for not for clients, but for uh, for my coaching business. And I happen to like it a lot. Follow Up Boss is a little bit cheaper than Chime, but the biggest difference between the two is Follow Up Boss is strictly a CRM where Chime also has the front facing website and AI technology. I'll tell you that some of the top three CRMs that are out there are Chime Boomtown, which is another really great one. Um, KV Core is another decent one. I like the other ones before KV Core. Those are my recommendations. Uh, there are quite a few out there. I would just say find the right one that suits your needs and your budget. But if you are going to invest into something that's a solid CRM, make sure it has the capability to connect to a front-facing website that can be public-facing, right? So that's where like companies like Chime and, 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 and uh, Boomtown and those, they do really well. They have front-facing websites. Their websites work on a decent speed. So that's something you want to ask as well. What's your reload speed, right? Because if somebody, you know, you go to a website, it doesn't move in the 0.2 seconds. You move on to another website because it was way too slow, right? And so as long as those companies are doing a great job with their front-facing website, their reload speeds, and then the attraction to get the people in to the CRM, you're in really good position. All the CRMs are going to offer other stuff like the smart campaigns, the trip campaigns, the automation, all that stuff is pretty much offered by everyone. But being able to have a speedy website in the front that connects to your CRM and a CRM that you're going to use. You know, I've had people where I say, uh, they say, hey, what's the best CRM out there? And I go, the one you actually use, because I'll tell you the next piece is that most people will invest money into the CRM website. They'll spend time building it up and then they'll get leads and stuff like that. And they go back to doing what they were doing before they had the CRM, trying to remember everybody's story. So use the CRM, actually like really, really make it a part of your day. Like first thing you open up is your CRM to see who you need to communicate with. All right. Hope that helps. Anyone else? All right, guys, have a fantastic week. We will see you next week. I think next week we're going to get heavy into brand equity. Um, so see you guys next week. Have a fantastic week. Rock it out. Think about everything we discussed today. Start creating the ideas of the funnels that you're going to create for marketing to get people to uh, become attracted to your website and to you. And then next week we'll get heavy into brand so you can associate the two things together. Have a great week, guys. Much success to you. Make it Freedom Day, okay?